it's not hard to look at the breath or to think about the breath. What's hard is to keep on doing it continually, regardless of distractions. And it turns out that the hard part is the one that's most important. It's only then that the mind has a good place to settle down. Otherwise, just thinking about the breath becomes one more place for the hind to hop around to. It's the sticking with it that makes the difference. So a lot of meditation is maintenance work, maintaining your intention to stick with the breath. Just like the monastery here. Not that much construction work goes on, but a lot of maintenance work goes on, sweeping every day, cleaning every day. And you notice in the forest at monasteries in Thailand, even less construction work, but the maintenance work continues. The Johns may discourage the monks from getting involved in construction, but they're strongly encouraged to stay with the maintenance to develop these habits, the habit of seeing that there's something good and you just want to stick with it, so that every day, no matter how tired you are, no matter what you would rather do, you do the maintenance work, because the place is livable only when you keep it up. And there's an old tradition that by sweeping up the monastery, you help to develop your discernment. Partly because it's a good way, a very easy way to keep the place looking good. In other words, when you don't let the sala or the any of the buildings get so covered with dust that you can't live in them anymore and then you just build a new building. That doesn't work at all. You take the easy way out, just keep it dusted. Day in, day out, day in, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it just keeps it clean. And also while you're doing the work, you have time to contemplate. You see the leaves falling off the trees. There are lessons in leaves falling off the tree. You swept up the leaves yesterday, and yet the trees keep producing more. It's the same with your mind. You clean out the defilements today, and if you don't stop the defilements at their source, you're going to have more you're going to have to clean up tomorrow. You take these lessons and you can internalize them. But the important thing is you develop this habit of valuing maintenance work. It's good work to do. It's calming. And it really does make a difference. And then you want to take those, those values about valuing maintenance work and you apply them to the mind. Just staying with the breath for a few minutes doesn't make that much of a difference. But if you stay with it all day, you find there's a big change in the mind. You get more and more reliable in your intentions. You get so you can rely on yourself more, and when you can rely on yourself, other people can rely on you too, as well. And you start noticing the things in your mind much more clearly than if you were moving around all the time. One of a John Fuang's students once complained that since she had started meditating, it seemed like her mind had more defilements than before. And as he pointed out, it's simply because you see them more clearly. It's like a room. If you don't dust the room, you never notice when more dust falls on the floor. It just becomes part of the same old pile of dust that's been there. But if you polish the floor every day, then you notice the least little bit of dust. You see this on the pad here in the monastery. If we didn't keep it swept every day, we wouldn't know what animals have been going across the pad. But because we keep it swept, you can see their tracks. You know, last night there was a, a rabbit came through, or something with bigger paws, or birds, or snakes. 
So it may seem tedious and it may seem uninspired. But this maintenance work, getting the mind to settle down and then learning how to keep it there, is really important. One of the tricks to maintenance work is to make it as unburdensome as possible, how to stick with the breath most efficiently. Actually, it takes more work per second to get the mind to settle down than it does to keep it to stay, because you've got to deal with all kinds of distractions that you're pulling the mind away from. But once it settles down, you find that you can keep it there without having to devote the same intensity of willpower. And that way there's more mental energy for really settling in. And you find it becomes more and more enjoyable. The ratio of effort put into the meditation to the pleasure that comes out is a lot more favorable. Less effort, more pleasure. Right there is an important lesson in discernment, seeing how efficiently you can keep the mind in place. This is why when they talk about the levels of jhana, the deeper it goes, the fewer activities are involved, because you're getting more efficient at keeping the mind in place. So all you have to do is just be mindful and watch, and you've got whole body awareness. Everything is still. Because directed thought and evaluation have done their work. Rapture and pleasure have done their work. They've given you a sense of fullness. They've given you a sense of ease. And now you can just be very contentedly right here in the present moment, very still, taking, using a minimum of effort. And yet everything in the mind seems really right. And a little voice in the mind will come along and say, well, enough of this, let's move on to the next thing. Well, no. The next thing is going to be found right here in the maintenance work. You don't have to go anywhere else. But what you do have to do is learn how to not to identify with those voices that come along and say, I'm bored, or let's get moving here. It's amazing how the mind is so fickle. You give it a good place to stay, and it gets bored. It wants to go out and look for trouble. This is the whole problem with the mind. It can't stay content. It's always finding new ways to make itself suffer. So look for the voices in the mind that lead you in that direction and learn how not to identify them. Learn to stick with the, the Capricorn voices, the ones that say, just stick with the work here, keep going. It's because you stick with it that things will make a difference. Things will change. Meaningfully. The easy change is just jumping around, but that's not meaningful. It's not productive. The productive change comes from sticking with one thing and seeing it clearly all the way through. You're here to test the Buddha's teachings. He says that your intentions will make a big difference in the mind if you pay attention to them, if you stick with them. So you've got to test them. The factor of intention becomes more, more helpful, the more harmless you can make it. Can you do that? Well, you've got to stick with it. And you've got to be really honest with yourself, because otherwise you wouldn't see the little bits of harm that come slipping through. That means you've got to stick with it continually. So in other words, you're testing your faith in the Buddhist teachings, but also it takes a certain amount of faith to stick with the test. So keep learning how to generate that enthusiasm, that sense of wanting to test the Buddhist teachings, to see how true they are. Because you look around at all the various alternatives that are out there, nothing seems nearly as promising it at all. Depend on this God, depend on that God, depend on material things. After you've had enough of them, if you really stick with them for a while, you really get sick of them. Because they don't provide any 
any real satisfaction. So here's this alternative. Let's stick with this one and see what it provides. And you will run up against boredom, but that doesn't mean it's not working. It just means that that's one more thing you've got to look into. But the Buddha here is giving the tools you need to look into it. How does boredom arise? How does it stay? How does it pass away? You can't see the movement of these things unless you're really, really still with the breath. So have a strong sense of the value of maintenance work, maintaining your intention, maintaining any good sensations you've got in the breath as best you can as a basis for helping that intention along. If you learn how to help the intention by encouraging yourself, by giving yourself a good place to stay, the task becomes lighter and lighter. And by keeping this intention unchanging, you find that it works real changes in the mind.